So these are the introduction to modding in Arma tutorials, and I'm going to try to make them as brief and as clear as possible. Um, so, you know, Arma is a very complicated uh, engine and, uh, you know, even more complicated to create assets for. Uh, it's getting a little bit more user friendly in Arma 3, but, uh, you know, Arma 2 is definitely leaves uh, a lot to be desired and, and, and is uh, fairly fractured. So, um, the information is available when you look around for it, but it takes a lot of Google searching to actually nail down exactly what you're looking for. Um, you know, there's there's easier modding platforms out there, but certainly not any that uh, offer the depth that Arma does. Um, so the aim of these guides are basically to um, provide clear and simple instructions, real repeatable examples uh, using the Arma model, uh, the Arma Bohemia sample models, and uh, to provide links to uh, resources and uh, some more in-depth guides and um, uh, you know, and, and just help people kind of dive into modding because it's not as complicated as it possibly seems on the surface. And, uh, you know, as you're first getting into it, it can all seem very overwhelming, but uh, it, it's really not that uh, difficult. So let's see here. The, you know, as far as being a beginner, what you're looking at for, um, you know, a roadmap is you need to establish your modding environment. Um, there's a tutorial linked here to uh, OpenDZ that's a, pr a four part pretty in depth um, guide to um, setting up a modding environment. But, you know, assuming that you have Arma installed, it's fairly simple. You just click download release candidate 2.5 from Bohemia Interactive, it downloads into a zip file, extract it, and uh, it's just real pure and simple click through. Um, once you've clicked through on all the, um, you know, here's a list of what it's got. It's got Oxygen 2, which is their modeling software. It's got Visitor 3, which is their terrain and map editing software. Uh, TextView 2 is a texture converter for their uh, proprietary texture formats. Uh, here's Bin PBO, which uh, packs your uh, add-ons. I recommend you use Micro's, uh PBO project, which we'll cover uh, in a minute. Uh, sound tools, um, FSM editor, bin make, uh, which is a uh, binarization tool. Again, I recommend you just use a PBO project as a packing suite. But um, the tools drive, which you know you have to install for Arma 2, Arma 3, they say it's not required, but I recommend it. And uh, font to TGA, which uh, creates fonts for Arma 2. Um, so it's, you know, it's a fairly small package, uh, but it's got everything you need to create everything you can, everything you see in Arma in front of you. I'm going to cancel this download because I obviously don't need any of that. Um, and so once you run and do the click through, um, you have everything installed and you'll have a P drive installed. Um, you know, P drive is wherever you tell it to be. Um, I've chosen a, um, my array of uh, because it's you know had the most space at the time which is actually getting pretty full um, but so your P drive gets created and it's just a virtual drive um, it always uh, displays uh, the same free space as whichever drive is in it uh, and it just contains all the files needed in order to um, in order to use the tools and to create and pack your own add-ons. Uh, the one thing that it does not have uh, out of the box is a CA folder, which is um, a folder that contains all of the add-ons from your uh, game install. Now, uh, traditionally that would uh, that was only available, you know, it was only available if you had a game installed. Now, with the uh, Bohemia sample models, um, or public data release, actually, Bohemia public um, they have actually released a data pack. Uh, you'll see here Arma license data pack, and what that contains is it's all of the PBO files from all of their games. Uh, you know, all of Arma 2, Arma 2 Operation Arrowhead, and all of the DLCs, as well as uh, Arma 1 and uh, Cold War Crisis. So with those, you can actually populate a CA drive um, with everything from Arma 2, Arma 2 Operation Arrowhead, 
and all the DLCs. So once you have the tools installed, uh, you need to create the P drive, as I mentioned. And I showed you my P drive, which has the CA folder, which is, again, uh, all the unpacked PBOs from your game install or from the public data releases, as I mentioned there. Uh, now, manually, this is an insane process. Uh, you have to go to Program Files, uh, Bohemia Interactive, uh, Arma 2, and then you need to grab all of the PBOs, so sort by type. So you need to grab all of the PBOs from here, as well as all of the PBOs from the common folder. And you need to copy uh, all of those to your P drive and extract them all, which, you know, obviously that's, you know, the, it's a lot of manual work. So a wonderful person by the name of Mikaro has uh, created tools, Mikaro's DOS tools. Mikaro's DOS tools, uh, you know, there's a uh, thread here on the forums. You go uh, to the Dev Heaven site, um, which is also a little daunting to navigate. But you download the relevant Arma 2, uh, Arma P uh, file. So there's, you know, for Arma 2, it's Arma 2P, uh, and then you just sort by date to make sure you have the latest version. And Arma 3P will do it for Arma 3. And what this does is automates that process. It takes a very long time. Uh, just click it, walk away, and it should hopefully run, you know, with no errors. If it does give you an error, it will tell you what the error is. It will be fairly clear, and you should be able to sort it out. Um, uh, and then uh, that pretty much sets up your development environment. And basically, it's just a matter of deciding what you want to work on because you're all set to go. You have all the tools you need, um, you know, via the uh, BI tools, and you have the development environment set up in the P drive. Um, and then it's just really a matter of deciding what sort of assets you want to work on. Um, there's a breakdown here um, that gives you a um, a uh, you know, general idea of what the different uh, uh, focuses are. Uh, you know, there's sound modification and um, and voice acting. There's mission editing, which is uh, you know can include even just cinematics, uh, or you know really robust single player or multiplayer missions. Uh, coding, which you know really is another one where it's just you know it's it's it can mean so many different things. You can be coding uh, little scripts for you know use within a multiplayer mission. It can mean you know uh, uh, third um, uh, external uh, software as well. Um, you know there's anti hack. There's um, there's um, some uh, you know Daisy obviously has this uh, high external hive system which uh, stores and accesses and and um, uh, updates information based on, you know, live game data. Um, then there's uh, community tool development, as you saw, you know, Mikaro's uh, DOS tools are, you know, uh, unbelievably helpful. There's uh, lots of other guys like him uh, who develop little tools that help, uh, help other modders get their work done faster, uh, whether it's just scripts or, um, or uh, you know batch tools, uh, lots of different things. Uh, then you have model making, which is you know can can be anything from making a, a simple asset uh, to you know for a player to access or use, you know, or just to be a set piece, um, you know, all the way up to um, you know, and I mean as simple as plants and trees and and things like that. And then uh, you know you get buildings and and um, you know up to player characters, tanks, helicopters, it can get as complicated as you want. Uh, texturing, then again, you know, it's, uh, you know, can uh, be a lot of different things, really. You know, you can be someone who just retextures characters or players or models, and, uh, and you know, or you can be somebody who creates entirely custom textures, um, uh, retexture assets, uh, you know, uh, if you're a modeler, um, you know, for instance, when, when I do my modeling, I don't do anything with the texture, but, you know, a lot of the, obviously a lot of the more creative and uh, people who are creating stuff from scratch are, you know, spending most of their time doing very high poly versions of their models and then creating textures with materials in, uh, in, in 3D modeling software. So, uh, uh, you know, but the, the, and texturing also can be is, you know, making textures for, um, for terrains or for the assets in terrains, uh, 
Uh, and then you have a terrain artist, which is, you know, that that's really, you know, I put it here, be prepared to have the steepest hill to climb. This is really all-encompassing. Uh, to be a terrain artist in Arma really involves having to have a uh, a pretty large uh, knowledge, working knowledge of every aspect of modding in, uh, in, in Arma. Um, so, you know, further down here, we've got, uh, again, setting up the modding art, uh, environment in Arma 2. Uh, you know, like I said, you'll need the tools. Click through. You need Micro's DOS tools. Uh, and then I link again to the um, Shin Kicker tutorial. There is, and then in Arma 3, the latest BI tools. This is much simpler. You just simply go to your Steam library. So you open up Steam library tools, and you'll see here uh, Arma 3 tools. And, you know, you just right click and, uh, you know, uh, install. And then once it's installed, you uh, have to play game once. Uh, there's a good tutorial linked uh, by Atch. Atish. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing them. Probably definitely not pronouncing that right. Um, but he's got a quick YouTube video, you know, no no narration, just a quick, uh, you know, click through of exactly what's involved if you want to watch that. Um, and then also today I noticed on the forums there is a good uh, there is a good tutorial in the model uh, if you go to Arma 3 editing and then modeling O2 there is a I lied where'd it go nope BI Tools General. Uh, there is a tutorial by ABS, uh, ABS, and it is for uh, how to install, uh, install and, and configure O2. Uh, you know for Arma 3, and it, it's it's good. It's uh, you know again fairly simple. It's got all the you know pictures you need here. Some more prep work. Uh, it says to P drive or not to P drive. And you know, it goes into the debate as to whether or not to use one and not. And he recommends using one. It goes through the manual process, but again, I mean, you know, I, I, I think it's borderline insane to do anything other than to use Arma 3P. You just, you, you click on it and it does it for you. It's perfect. It works every time. It's amazing. Um, and then, um, and then he's got some, uh, some tips here on how to configure O2, and this is really important because, you know, again, unfortunately, a lot of the stuff out of the box is just, it's just not user-friendly, and it's not intuitive, and it's not set up out of the box. So you have to manually configure a bunch of things in Oxygen to get to a starting point where you can work, which is the point of this tutorial for Arma 3, and is the point of the, uh, of the um, Shin Kicker tutorial for Arma 2. So those again, both linked here, um, and uh, you know, gives you a, a quick and easy uh, guide through those uh, much more intimately than I can provide here. And then uh, a little, you know, a couple of donation links here for people who you know who really do spend a lot of time in the community. There's Open Daisy. They you know they need. Uh, they're looking to you know cover their server costs. You've got Q, who's a you know a longtime Arma modder, who's uh, you know also just looking to cover some costs. Uh, Snake Man, who runs the you know the tactical, uh, the PMC tactical is the gr most amazing resource for tutorials. It's amazing. If you are ever looking for anything you know regarding modeling and whatnot, it'll really they probably have information on it. Um, so always check there if you're looking to do something uh, that you don't feel, that you think isn't covered. Trust, if you check there, you will probably find it.